Ortega coming to you from the heart of New York City. It's my honor to be your host today on TBN Salsa. I want to take this time to say thank you to Matt and Lori Crouch, as well as Reverend Samuel Rodriguez for giving us another opportunity to boast on our God. You know, with this show, it's my heart to highlight people in movies, music, media, ministry, that are doing things for the kingdom of God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. But it also says that God has given to each and every one of us gifts to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. So I am so happy because I get to introduce you to someone who's doing just that. Hailing from right here in Brooklyn, New York, a Boricua, Puerto Rican from, uh, you know, heritage. It's my honor to introduce you to American professional boxer, former World Boxing Association champion. He held the welterweight title and competed for a world title twice. Everyone welcome Luis Calazo. Thank you. Thank you. I am so happy to have you as my guest because I'm used to watching clips on YouTube or seeing some of your fights, but never in person. And I'm so grateful to know that not only are you this cool, tough guy in the ring, but you have a heart for God. So I know I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but I wanna, I wanna learn about you. I wanna introduce my audience to you. I love that you're a Puerto Rican Latino yes. um, in the house because this, you know, this network is for second generation English speaking Latinos. Correct. So to meet and introduce people to someone like you is awesome. So Luis, how are you? I'm good in yourself. <laughs> I'm great. Good to be here. Um, talk to me a little bit about you. I know you weren't always at the top in the boxing ring or even a Christian, per se. So tell us a little bit about your life. Well, um, I was born and raised in East New York. Um, moved to Williamsburg when I was about nine years old. Mm -hmm. And um, growing up, I had a rough childhood. You know, my, my parents got divorced at an early age. And um, I was a rebellious child. I was a um, child of two, one the youngest. And um, and you grew up in in in, in the hood, correct? Because correct. you know these neighborhoods are changing now, but you know the neighborhoods you mentioned in Brooklyn were not very good neighborhoods. You know, um, back then there was a lot of drugs, um, prostitution, mm. and um, at the time when my parents got divorced, uh, my older brother was the only one in the household. My dad was an alcoholic at the time, mm -hmm. and um, he was the only one I would look up to. And um, wow. to so have your a brother. You yeah. looked up to your brother? Correct. And he wasn't the most positive role model I, I could have had. You know, he was into drugs. Oh, wow. And, um, you know, at an early age, nine years old, I was already selling drugs, smoking marijuana. And um, I How did... does that happen? I know, because we're from New York, so we know the hard knock life. We know that tough life. But I'm sure there's people from all over the America watching. And they, they can't fathom, how does, how does a nine-year-old get into to dealing drugs? You know, being around certain people, they say um, when you're around negative people, you, you're going to become negative. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the only outlet that I had to look up to. Wow. You know, my dad would work, come home 8 o'clock at night. So all day I'm with my brother at home and I'm seeing him deal with drugs. So I'm looking up to him like he's a positive role model. But at the same time, he wasn't. So I me mean, being naive, being 8 years old, and um, I looked up to him and started dealing and started smoking weed and then um wow two years later is when my dad met my stepmother she um she changed his ways he stopped drinking he took me to a boxing gym and um try to keep Your me out of the streets my dad yeah because wow. i lived with my dad and my mom left because i didn't like her husband she was with and mm. i was doing rebellious things yeah. and uh 
I moved with him, went to the gym, and then from there on, I just started going uphill. So let me ask you about that because, you know, people don't realize the importance of having just an extracurricular activity. You know, for people that grow up in neighborhoods that are not so great, putting them in an after school program or in something like baseball or boxing or something like that can really change someone's life. And you're saying that basically just having something else to do with your time helped transform your path. Absolutely. Um, boxing did change not only my path, but it changed my, my dad's path as well. Wow. Because he loved it. He, this is what he loved, like, watching as, as a child and growing up. I wasn't too fond of it. Growing up, I was more into <laughs> baseball. But as I kept going and he was there supporting me, and I knew it was bringing joy to him, so I kept going and... Um, you know, became one, number one in the, in the country at the time. I was wow. 14 years old. What? So just traveling the world, got to see that. And um, I'm just forever grateful. And, you know, as time kept going, I became a professional. Uh, the year 2000 and fought for the world title when I was 24. Wow. It was just like a kid from Brooklyn, knowing where I came from. You were living the dream. It was phenomenal. So, so how does, like, so you weren't even into boxing. So you, did you just have the gift to, like, throw the hands? It's amazing what? that you say that because, you know, <laughs> in every sport or whatever it is you do, mm -hmm. you're born with that gift. Mm. You just got to be able to find it and explore and, and, and see if you can find it. And boxing, I guess, was my calling, you know? Wow. And not only that, but I'm here today because of it. Mm. But now I'm not just doing it for myself. I'm doing it for the Lord. So how does that happen? How do you go from this kid, this, you know, bad kid <laughs> from Brooklyn to boxing to Christ to now a born again? Hey, Brooklyn boxing, born again, come on. <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing because, you know, growing up, my parents were Catholic. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to go to church, but I never listened. I was one of those kids playing with the button and, and going falling asleep, <laughs> and I get pinched in my ear. But, um... A couple of, uh, about four years ago, you know, I was into the clubbing after the fights, mm. hanging out, partying, and there was a, came a point in my life that um, I just, I was just depressed. I had a void that nothing to work and fill. Like, you know, I had my kids, I had my wife, at the time she was my girlfriend, mm -hmm. and um, I still didn't, I wasn't full. Mm. So... One night, I just cried out to the Lord, like, Lord, please, if you can change my life, I will give my life to you. How did you know to cry out to the Lord? I heard of God, but I never had that one-on-one. -on -one. So you knew that it was God that could yeah. help you. If nothing else, I mean, you're famous, you know, you're living the dream, you have a family. If nothing else is fulfilling you, you, you turn to God. Absolutely, and, um, you know, I, I always tell people I have, I had everything in the work and offer, and I still wasn't happy. Mm. But that night I cried out, and the next day I just woke, I just woke up like a total new person. I'm like, wow. that's why I say the power of prayer is so amazing. Yes, and the Holy Spirit. You know, I think about the simplicity of prayer, right? Because a lot of people who don't know Christ, you know, people like you before coming to the Lord, they don't know. Correct. You know, there or some of them think, oh, maybe I have to do this big ritual, you know, or I have to go light candles or I have to do a million, you know, uh, repeated prayers in order for God to change my life. But you just went to God with the simplicity of your broken heart. I always say a pure heart, you'll, you'll see his goodness. Amen. Don't just go half-hearted, mm. go full-hearted. Yeah. And you, you're going to see it. You're going to see his glory and it's just... It's not overwhelming because at the moment I'm like, I'm totally different, but it's overflowing as you keep going and you keep interacting with him. You, yeah. you see his goodness. Yeah, and I, I tell people too, it's like, just be genuine and try God. You know, people are like, no, oh, okay, for you. But it's like, okay, try him for yourself. Correct. Because we know that our God is real. We know he's good and he's right. going to show up. So, okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So you wake up different. What happens? Your family's like, hey, what got into you, Louis? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, my wife used to go to church before. Now my wife. Um, yes. But she backslid oh. due to breaking up her ex-husband. 
So it's amazing because she used to say, I used to pray to God to find a man of God. Mm. So when she told me that, like, I cried. Why? Because I was taking her away from God at the, at the time. Wow. And, you know, I get emotional talking about it because I never thought that. That's why I say the power of prayer is so amazing because when you pray for something and it comes to tuition, that's just confirmation. Like, yes. God is good, you know? And um, I'm just blessed and, and, and grateful that I'm here today, not only doing what I love to do, but doing what God yeah. called me to do. So she backslid this. She then see, well, what did you do? Did you say, babe, let's go to church? Or? Exactly what I said. She looked at me like I was crazy <laughs> because she knew the type of person I was. Wow. And then when I said, we got to go to church, we got to change our life, she was like, like, she told me, like, I said, amen. But she said inside. Like, yeah. she didn't say it to me because she, she was probably like, oh, this guy is going crazy. <laughs> but um, after that, we started going to church. And and then, so now how does that translate on the ring, like, in the ring? So, you know, because you knew what it was to be the bad boy, boxer, you know, probably Papi Chulo, <laughs> walking on the stay on the ring. Now it's like, God is doing a work in your heart, but you still, you're still in the same profession. So yes. how does that translate in that world? Well, now the platform I'm in, mm -hmm. I don't glorify myself. Mm. Back then, I would just take all glory and praise. Wow. But now everything I do, I, I give it to the Lord because yeah. if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. You know, at the time I was going through a dark time, I thought about killing myself. Mm. I had, you know, I, had, I was going through depression and thought about suicide a couple of times. And it didn't happen. Why? Because that wasn't a plan for me that God wanted for him. Yeah, well, thank you, Jesus. So um, everything I do now is just for the glory of God, and it's the most amazing feeling I can ever have. So, because I, I, I wasn't born saved or anything either, or in a Christian family, very similar like you. And I know when you do the change and the transition, you get pushed back sometimes, or they're like, oh, that's a Jesus freak now. Tell us a little bit about that. Did you have to deal with any of that? And, and if you did or do deal with that, how do you handle it? Because there might be people out there that are one foot in and one foot out because of that, because they're afraid of the criticism and they don't want, you know, to be called a Jesus freak or, you know, for people to judge them. How, how do you handle It's that? amazing because I know there's a lot of believers and athletes and yeah. actors and all around the world that have the plateau the platform to be able to, to spread the love and, and the truth. And um, they're ashamed. You know, like the Come shirt on. says, I'm not ashamed of the yes. gospel, you know. And um, mm. I'm not only here to, to take glory for myself anymore. Like, I've been there, I've done that, and it didn't, it didn't give, do no good for me. Mm -hmm. And um, since I've been serving the Lord, yes, I've been going through some obstacles here and there, but it's okay, I'm not alone. Mm. I know he's with us. Wherever we go, and um, he's leading the way. He's the, the light to my feet. Mm. And um, I just want to keep glorifying the Lord as, as much as possible. Um, I want to do boxing as, as, as long as he gives me the, the strength and the ability to do so. And um, all glory to his name because yeah. I'm coming. I'm coming. Amen. So basically, you, you have God. So it's yes. like if the world turns their back on you, you have God. Yes. Amen. Now let me talk about with you about the Christians now who are probably like, how are you going to be a boxer and be a Christian? Because we have those two. So right. I want to cover know, all ground, absolutely. right? Because I'm sure there'll be pictures of you in the ring and they're going to be like, but how is he? And then also it's a violent kind of thing. Right. Um, so how, what do you say to those people who are, are kind of like, well, how do you do that and still serve the Lord? Which is, I think, can be an ignorant thought, but I'd you like know, for you um, as a real Christian to share about that. It's amazing because I believe me and the other fighter, we, we train for this. It's not like I'm fighting you, for instance. Let's say you don't train for this. Yeah. So I'm not taking advantage of you. Mm. You're not taking advantage of me. Mm. We both got the proper time to train, to get ready for this bout. But now it's up to you and me who we doing it for. So a lot of people do it for their families. Uh, for, for whatever it is they, they're trying to raise or they're trying to prove to. Me, I'm doing it for the glory of God. Mm. Yes, it, it helps me um, bring money to the table to feed my family. Yeah. But at the end of the day, 
I'm glorifying God. <clears throat> Let's talk about the, the, the risk there is in boxing. Because, you know, I've, I don't know if you've been watching, but all the sports stuff with CTE, which is what supposedly Correct. Aaron Hernandez had, yes. and it's why he snapped. And I think about, that's football, but I think about basketball, I mean, boxing, which is very similar. You know, people can have concussions, they get hit on their head or something like that, that kind of movement. What kind of practical things do you think about or do you, how do you prep in terms of that? Because it's a risk. You know, um, going into a ring, going into uh, football, whatever type of sport it is, you're taking a risk, even in life. Yeah, you that's know, you true. You can walk down Getting the street in a car. And, and something can happen. But um, as an athlete, that's what it's, you know, you got to prepare yourself, not only physically, but mentally. And um, God gives us the strength and, and he, he guards us beyond what we can ever imagine. You know, when we leave things on our own hands and try to do them, and, and, and take care of them by on our own, we're going to fail sometime, mm. you know, and we got to get tired and he gives us the strength and he won't be a week. And it's just phenomenal that I'm able to seriously keep doing what I'm doing at my age because for boxing, yeah, my age, yeah. I'm like an old man, I'm like, <laughs> basically like a grandfather. What? Yeah. In boxing? Yes. Oh. But you're still going. I'm still going, and you know these young guys coming up, um, champions now, they always have problems with me. Why? I don't know. But well, I give all, all the praise, God in you, I, yeah. I give praise and, and glory to God. So you showed me before we started taping a scar that you have in your hand. Um, <clears throat> so you, like, well, and I, we, you know, we were talking about God and just thanking him for the fact that you had to miss a fight to right. get the surgery, but then God used this platform to help you advance his kingdom. Um, how is it with your family? Like, how do they handle it when you get hurt like that? Or, you know, I mean, I just think as a wife, because I'm a wife, you know, my husband is a veteran, but we got married after he left the military. And I'm always like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I could have dealt with it. And I think of your beautiful wife and just the nerves that she might yeah. have sometimes when you go up there. Well, um, my dad, he don't mind if I get hit. He's, I think, the only one. But um, as far as my daughters and, and my wife, they, I think she gets more nervous now than when she did when we first met because now we in love. Hmm. You know, back then it was just, oh, I'm going to do this collazo. <laughs> but um, it, it, it hurts. And, you know, it, it's, it could come to a point that I'm like, you know what, I don't want to put my family through this no more, oh. so I got to leave it. But... I don't want to leave on my terms. Yeah. I want to leave on God's terms. Wow. It's not about me no more. So talk to me about your spiritual life then, because you're a boxer and people see you, you do that thing, but you're committed in church, right? Correct. You go to Christ Tabernacle? Yes. Yes, yeah, a beautiful church here in New York. And, and so now, if you leave boxing, what's next? Not sure at this moment, but... um. I want to do the work of God. I want to go um, try to do missionary trips. And um, right now, I just um, teamed up with a tent, NYC. They go out and um, try to help people that are in need. Mm. And um, I just partnered up with them, and I just want to keep doing that and just serve. I want to be a fisher of man, like the Lord said. You know, I'm looking at you, and uh, it's amazing, because I didn't know you before Christ. And I know when people meet me, they're like, you were bad? Like, but how's that possible? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because they don't know us before Christ. And I, all I hear and I see is your heart of humility. I know there's going to be young guys watching this show. <clears throat> and you know when you're young, every, you know, you have that pride. You have that, like, yes, I, I want to be yes. the man. I want to be successful. The American dream is very contrary in ter terms of the way they want you to feed that dream to the word of God. Because it's all about getting to the top, regardless how you get there. And it can be very cutthroat. But if you can talk to some guys, or there's probably girls out there watching, that they want that success. They're looking for, for that fame that you have. But they're missing that heart for God. If you can encourage somebody, you know, for you it was a prayer between you and God. Correct. For other people, it can be hearing your testimony because we overcome the devil by the blood of Jesus and the word of people's testimony. So if you can just share 
with anyone out there that could be watching about just that transition and, and, and taking that step of humbling themselves? You know, um, don't leave things on your, on your own understanding. You know, sometimes you're going to face trials and tribulations. You're going to go through obstacles that you, you feel you, you're not going to be able to go through on your own. You know, a lot of times we want to turn to our friends, we want to turn to a family member that we think that they can help us. But at the end of the day, if they don't have a relationship with the Lord, they might guide you the wrong way. The power of prayer is so amazing. If you truly want to conquer, you, you have no option but to get out that obstacle, pray about it. Don't talk to no one else. Pray about it. Take it to the Lord. Get on your knees. Put your, your pride and your ego aside because a lot of us have it. And we got to starve the flesh, feed the spirit. You might not understand what I'm saying, but put whatever hurt, whatever um, brokenness you have, put it in the feet of the Lord. Don't get overwhelmed if it does happen right away. If it doesn't happen right away, it's okay. Maybe there's something else he's trying to fix in you. Maybe he, he wants you to go through the process of, of growing. We, I just don't know what it is, but Lean not on your own understanding. Think about what you're doing. Don't be deceived by the things of the world because there's a lot of things out there that can manipulate your minds and, and, and drag you the wrong way. Thank you for listening. Stay strong and, and praise God because he's the only one that gets get you out any obstacle that you think you can't get out of. Amen. So how do you go from, how do you keep it? How do you keep your salvation? How do you stay from the ring, from everything you just said to people? They lay it at the feet of Jesus. They get, you know, they start on their journey, but the devil's real and he's pulling. And this generation and this world needs so much prayer because it is hard out there. How do you, Luis Calazo, you're famous, you're on stage still, you still have those things that want to rise up, Absolutely. how do you starve that flesh? You know, um, I always say staying plugged in. You know, you wake up and you pray and, and, and read the word because we live in a world, like you said, we live in some dark times. Yeah. And in order to, to shed that light, you got to be energized. You got to have the battery t to the max. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's amazing because I have a stepbrother that he always pokes me. Mm. Oh, you're a Christian now. You're a oh. Christian now. But... It's amazing because when I used to party and, and get drunk, he was the, always the first one to talk about God. What? But now that I, I changed around and I'm doing the things of God, he pokes me. Mm. Like, oh, you, you still a Christian? Yeah. But he tried to bring up the past, but that's, that's the enemy. Yeah, it like, is. Like, I don't want to know about my past. Yeah. My past is gone. You're, Today is you're here. You're made new. Correct. All right, so I know people are watching. We didn't have any video showing you in action. So I want you to show me some of those moves, <laughs> okay? <Listen>. So <clears throat> I, um, you know, all I know is about street fighting because we, we from Brooklyn. <laughs> so what do I do in boxing stance? This won't be for a street fight. This will be boxing. Teach okay, me some so, of your so moves. Okay, so you're a righty? Yes. You're going to be orthodox. So you're going to put okay. your feet this way. Left foot? Left foot front. Okay. Turn your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Always give the shoulder, because now if you're here, you, I have more target to hit. Okay. So if I'm here, I have, you have less. Okay. So you can turn this way, hand here. So this is your jab, this is your right hand. Okay. So I'm going to say one, two. Okay. So you can throw, jab is one, two. When you turn, oh, okay. take that little, that little pivot. All right, so. Boom. So now it's one. You said like if I was turning off a cigarette, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Just, so let me do, okay. So this, will be one. this is, what's this called? A jab. A jab. Jab, right hand. Right hand. All right, so now the third one is going to be your hook. So you're going to turn off the cigarette with the foot, <laughs> right? Okay. So it's jab. Uh, okay, jab. Right, mm -hmm. hook. Uh, so always sorry. keep the hand. I'm, hurt, okay. I, I'm sure I'm not hurting you, but. Wherever you start, that's where you're going to finish. So if you're starting from here, you, you finish here. Okay. Okay, so jab, uh -huh. right, hook. There you okay, go. Okay, and am I holding my fist right? Yeah, fine. 
Okay. But remember, when you you can't hold those your fists all the time with intention. Yeah. So because now you can start getting tired oh, here, you yeah, can stay okay. tight. So you oh. gotta stay nice and calm. And I am over. I'm like. <laughs> so you gotta stay calm, but. Yeah. All right, let's relax. do it one more time. So jab. Jab. Right. Right. Hook. Hook. Remember, always finish with your hand. Oh. Hook. All right, I'm sorry. Right. Let's do it one right. more time. I'm gonna do it right jab. now. Jab. Right. Right. Hook. Hook. There you go. Yay! <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I know that there are people out there today that were blessed by your story. Um, they even got to learn some boxing moves <laughs> with me, you know, and I just really thank the Lord for your journey because sometimes people think that you cannot be in secular environments and be a Christian, but you're, you're a true example that there, there needs to be a voice for God in all, Absolutely. you know, uh, areas in all ministries and you know, um, I will continue to pray for you and, and cover you in prayer because you are in a dangerous sport um, and there's risk to everything in life. But I'm so grateful that God brought you here. I'm sure there, there's men and women out there that were so blessed by your testimony. And, you know, really for you out there watching, like I said earlier, that's my heart to introduce you to people in all different forms of media or entertainment that are doing things for Jesus Christ. And just like Lewis um, gave his life to the Lord after prayer and an encounter with God, that can happen for every single one of us. And, um, you know, every, everyone has a testimony. And I can't wait to hear about yours. God bless. We wanna hold